Have you ever thought you could take your DNA and bend it into a circle? Well, now you can do it. It's of course procedural as hell and you can achieve many different styles from this one single DNA. First, we're gonna keep the default cube in this place and we're gonna go to the geometry nodes workspace. And what we're gonna do is to add a set of geometry nodes as always. So you're gonna drag them a bit more wide and now let's think how we can create the DNA. So the DNA is basically two spirals that have been put together and it looks like that. So how do we do this? Well, first, to create the spiral, we need a line and we need to modify it uh, so that it becomes a spiral. So first, as I said, we need a line. So let's add a line here. So we have 10 points here and we somehow have to make sure it's a spiral. So if you look at the spiral from the top down, you see it's basically a circle, right? Because you can't understand it's going upwards like a screw. You only see it's a circle if you look like exactly from the top down. So first we're gonna create the circle and then we're gonna tackle this uh, spiral problem. This can be complicated, but I made a little explanation for you. So you see here, I have a circle with a radius of five. Basically this circle is made up from points that are placed infinitely like densely here. So here's one point C. And if you want to create the circle with a radius of 5, you just have to move this point like that around the uh, middle point here. What is the exact placement of this point? So this leg here is the X movement and this one here is the Y movement. For example, if you move it here, we know that we have to move on the X axis 4 points or 4 meters, for example. And on the Y axis, we have to move 3 meters. This is the correct movement in case of an angle of 36 degrees. So for example, when we have like, let's say 78 degrees, we have to move for, for about 1 meter on the x-axis and for about let's say five meters on the y-axis and this number can be calculated from this angle so this one here is the adjacent leg and this can be calculated using the cosine and this one here is the opposite leg and can be calculated using a uh, sine to calculate the triangle legs for every point of the circle we need a different value for every point of the circle right now this is the angle but with our line the only thing that is different for each point is the z location so let's use the z location of each point and calculate the sine of it to get the y movement but we can't access these points right now because they are in this position attribute so so in order to get those out of this attribute, we're going to use a separate XYZ, attribute separate XYZ. And you plug it here and you type in here position first. And then the result X is going to be X, the Y is going to be Y and the Z is going to be Z. So now we have all the data from this position attribute accessible in different columns here. So we can do some crazy math stuff with them. As I told you, we have to take the sign of our ever changing number. Let's use an attribute math node since uh, making sign of something is math and let's change it to sign and our ever-changing number that helps us to create the circle is the z attribute because you see it changes like constantly and we're going to calculate the sign of this z attribute and result in the y movement so let's call this a new y and as you see the new y is here in the spreadsheet and another calculus uh, or another calculation we're going to do is to create the cosine so the cosine is going to give us uh, the leg down here we just don't name this the new y but we're going to call this the new x because it's going to give us the movement on the x-axis that we have to travel in order to get to the right point up here now to actually use these new attributes we're going to use a combine uh, XYZ attribute combine XYZ change them all to attributes and let's combine to the position attribute since we want to change the position of these points and right now we have combined exactly nothing to the position attribute so we have nothing here right we need to fix that so the X attribute is gonna be our new X let's type in here a new X and the Y attribute is gonna be the new Y look at that we have a circle here right if you want to change the resolution, for that we have this uh, Z distance here. Now let's turn this into a spiral. This is going to be exciting and actually super easy because you see a spiral. For example, let's say we have one vertex here. First one in case of a spiral is here. The second one should be here but a little bit up on the Z axis. And the third one should be more up on the Z axis and so on and so on. And luckily we have an attribute that is going to give us a bigger number for every vertex and this is of course our Z attribute. So let's put the Z attribute here and as you see we have a spiral and the Z here works as a resolution. Let's set it to something like 0.4 
and we can add more of these points to create like a longer spiral right so let's add like let's say 30 points here and we have a part of the dna right we need the second one so to make the second one this is actually really simple we're just gonna add a join geometry node and then a transform node to rotate the second copy on the z-axis so the rotation of 120 degrees seem to be working pretty well but you can use anything you want there actually and once this is done it's time to add some balls i don't want to go too complicated with that but let's say we just had one ball here or there and last time i received some critiques about not showing how i made a ball out of a cube so now watch carefully right so we take this cube enter into edit mode and to subdivide it and I open this menu here and turn up the smoothness and add three uh, cuts. We don't want to have too much resolution here. I feel like the balls are becoming such an inside joke on this channel already. I mean, we had the juicy balls with the raspberry. Now we have just a ball. What's going to come next? Nobody knows that. Now to add these balls on these points here, uh, we need an instance node. So let's use a point instance node, which is a node that instances something on every point of the previous mesh. In our case, we have like uh, 30 times 2 points, we have 60 points here and we are gonna use all those points and instance on them the ball. So now we have something like that and I think this could be really useful to create some ropes or strings or something like that but in our case it's just too big. To make the balls uh, here smaller we need something that changes the scale attribute. So for that let's use a randomize attribute because why not? Let's use the scale attribute here and let's make so that the smallest ones have the scale of 0.1 and the biggest ones have the scale of 0.12. And this looks like a nice DNA but it's empty. DNA should have some kind of lines in the middle. I don't know how these are called. Maybe someone could tell me in the comments. I call them bridges. So let's create one of these bridges. Uh, so for that let's add a cube. This cube is just gonna be a sad slave of our geometry nodes. We're not gonna expose it in a render in any way. So let's add a new set of geometry nodes on the cube and let's add a line again because you see we have like basically an array of balls. To create an array we need a line so let's use a line here and now let's use a point instance node because we're gonna instance the same ball on this line and this is looking pretty similar to this one here right and now let's use a randomize node where is it here and let's scale these points down by the way the scale attribute for some reason doesn't show up in the drop down menu and uh, you just have to brute force it so just type in scale and bam it works the minimum is gonna be something small in our case and the maximum is gonna be something maybe a bit bigger something like that the z offset is gonna be like a useful thing to make it smaller and here we have it, the uh, middle bridge here. Of course, it's not gonna be so basic of a bridge. We're gonna make it a bit more elaborate. So let's 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 first rotate this a bit because I don't like the rotation too much right now. So let's rotate it on the Y axis like that. So it is more like an easier, easier thing to look at. I'm gonna add a little interesting detail here. So you press uh, Shift A and you add a single vert. And if you don't have it, we just go to this uh, add-ons menu here and search for extra objects and there you have them add mesh extra objects and let's extrude the vert like that and then let's select both of these and let's subdivide them and add some cuts like let's say seven cuts and now I'm just gonna do some very advanced modeling so something like that right maybe add a little fun twist here in the end right and we have it here and we're gonna go here and instance the part of the bridge on this bridge. So let's use an object info node because it's a separate object and we can get it into this geometry node system that way. So let's uh, select from here part of the bridge and now we have to join it and for joining we need a join geometry node. So put like one here and the other here, you have it. But it's not very nice. That's because we're gonna hide the part of the bridge. You see it's still here and that's because the origin point of this mesh is pretty messed up. So let's set the origin to the middle point and let's hide the original part of the bridge and let's move it on the x-axis so that now it's like a really nice looking little DNA part. It's gonna look like that with a wireframe modifier and it's gonna be like the end result also. So you get a little sneak peek here. So let's delete the wireframe modifier and let's 
uh, think how we can add this little bridge here to this DNA. It's gonna be between the points or the balls that are on the same level. So these balls here are gonna have one like bridge and these balls here are two gonna have one bridge. And so this is like how the story goes, right? The idea is to instance uh, the bridge on one of these spirals and then rotate it so that it looks like they are, you know, getting together or uh, like being between the two balls, right? So to do that, what we need to do is first delete these annotations and then let's add an instance node point instance and select the bridge looks like nothing so let's uh, take the first geometry of the line and let's see how it looks like a plain boring line nothing interesting and it doesn't work for us so let's use the spiral uh, from the middle that we created and let's drag it here so now they're looking more like a spiral but well they are not too good either so first thing we have to fix is to join the uh, dna and the bridges so for that let's use a join geometry node and plug them here and if you're wondering why i'm not using this join geometry node here well the reason is that if i plug it here then you see it's gonna instance our balls on these bridges as well and this is not very beautiful this is like very sick dna that's something we shouldn't do so let's use this join geometry node here and let's think what we have to do to fix this so as we see the rotation is pretty messed up each one of those is rotated in exactly the same way and this isn't what we want to do so to fix that let's use a point rotate node uh, point rotate and plug it not after the instance it's not gonna work right we have to plug it before the instance so let's put the instance like here and the rotation here and now when you change the rotation they're gonna rotate but they're all gonna rotate at the same time so using a vector doesn't work for us so let's try an attribute let's think what kind of an attribute can we use to make each one of those uh, bridges rotate a little bit more this has to be an attribute that goes bigger with every instance of these balls and you are right this is our Z attribute, it's gonna get bigger with every copy of these uh, vertices here. So we're gonna use the Z attribute here, let's type it here. And what do we have here? A serious example of a genetic disease, but it's getting close up already, right? We're gonna solve this. The problem here is that the Z attribute here is a float attribute, because you see we have separated a vector attribute as you see here, vector attribute position into three different attributes that are all floats because a vector is made up from three floats. So we have this float attribute, but the point rotate is gonna use a vector. So when it receives a float attribute, it's gonna type the float values in all of the sockets of the vector. So it's gonna result in a very strange rotation because it's gonna rotate on all the axes at once. To fix that, we have to convert the Z attribute into a vector attribute that contains only the Z data. So for that, the good old vector math node is gonna give us some vector calculus. So what we have to do is to take the Z attribute and we're gonna result it in the Z attribute. But what are we gonna do with it? Well, we're gonna multiply the Z attribute with a vector and the vector is gonna be a zero right now so as you see nothing has changed because we're gonna just uh, delete the contents of the z attribute basically but we're gonna multiply it with one on the c channel so right now it has converted the z float attribute into a vector that only has original z values for the z channel let's call this like the z new for example so uh, where is our z new okay I'm gonna display this in the spreadsheet. So you see Z new only has values for the Z. And for example, if I move it here, we have values for the Y as well. And here we have values for the X, but we're gonna keep it on the Z values uh, for now. And let's type Z here again. And now it's gonna rotate pretty, pretty nicely. Just they are, you know, offset a bit. So to fix that, what you have to do is to add something to the rotation. So let's use another attribute, the vector math, whatever. And let's add something to the Z rotation. Add something like that. And this is gonna work pretty nicely. In your case, this might not work. Maybe you have to try with a inverted rotation like that. So you type in minus one here, just in case you have problems. Looking pretty nice, but they're pointing outwards from the, from the sides here. So to fix that, we need a point scale node. And if you wanna scale this on all the axes at once, we can either use the vector here and scale it like that, or we can just use a float and conveniently track this one thing here like that. And now comes the fun part, we're gonna make it animated. So let's uh, first add a wireframe 
and as you see it's gonna look pretty okay pretty nice maybe just make it a bit um finer in this place here we're gonna add a circle right and rotate it on the x-axis and make it like so big let's say so now let's add a curve modifiers from here and let's select the only curve we have in the scene and now it looks like that getting into the area of genetic diseases again so let's go up here let's fix this by selecting a different deform axis so maybe y works uh, and it does work so right why is the good axis in this case and uh, now it's time for animation so we're gonna add some quick controls in the geometry nodes workspace and then we can animate our dna so let's go here we have this group input and the first quick control i'm gonna add is for the count so the count is like pretty self-explanatory you just add bridges with balls right now the second control is for the animation so to animate it we just have to displace the start location like that and it's gonna climb on the line right so uh, we cannot or we could actually drag a control from here to there and we have a vector here and it's gonna like look very terrible so we're gonna disconnect this remove this stupid start location stuff from here and let's use a combine xyz instead and let's drag from here to the z location and now we can animate this with only a single value right so this one here is gonna be called the movement and the one down here is useful for setting the length or the squeeziness or the squeezeness of this uh, DNA. So let's use another combine XYZ. Let's drag to the offset and let's uh, control the Z again. Let's call this the squeeze. Uh, now we have all these quick controls in place. How can we animate it now? Uh, well, if you're part of the subscriber mafia, you already know what you have to do. Normal people would just add keyframes, but we're gonna use a driver, of course, because we are all very procedural guys and girls here. So you add the hash frame, right? And it's very, very fast. It's like a rabbit DNA right now. And you're gonna type after that a division, for example, let's say five. And now you have a DNA that is doing its circles, its morning routine, very nice and calm way. So the DNA is ready. And what we have to do now is to add the materials, of course, because DNA without the material, who are you trying to fool here? Anyways, this is the DNA here, right? Let's make it longer. Let's add 128 of those and maybe a bit less. Pretty much okay. Okay, 109, right? So this is the DNA and the material is going to be something for lazy people like I am. So I'm going to use a geometry node here like pun intended a geometry node right you got it so the position here is a very nice color which comes from the vectors how it's like placed if it's in the middle of the world it's gonna have such colors if it's gonna be in a different location it's not gonna have the same colors so use it to your advantage or write mean comments about why your colors are not working so we're gonna use the position as the emission color in the principled PSDF. And right now it looks like that. Let's enable bloom, ambient occlusion, screen space reflections, and all that stuff. And it does look okay, but we need something else. We need a noise texture. A noise texture node, and let's use a color ramp to drive the emission strength in different places. If I add some more like black and white, some more contrast here, it's gonna look more interesting. And right now it is better but the emission is very low because the color ramp is clamping the values uh, from 0 to 1 so to make it bigger we need a math node and we need multiply and then we need a large number something like let's say 36 and it's looking pretty crappy because i don't have filmic uh, blender enabled yeah something like that so this is how you make such a dna by the way thanks for 5000 subscribers the procedural mafia is growing and you're already like uh, 14.28 times more people than in my home village. That's pretty crazy, right? Anyways, thanks for watching and have a nice day.